Um, I'm going to, uh, to, to really look at some of the, not necessarily the mechanics of how we did it, but more really what the outcomes uh, were. I I'm just going to start though with the migration because it's a particularly difficult challenge and one that I know <coughs> many organisations are facing with the discontinuation of the WebCT Blackboard product. So on the left hand side we had the uh, Blackboard WebCT Vista with about 18,000 units of study in it. And we needed to migrate a subset of those across into the new environment. Um, we found very early on that there are different requirements across the different groups within the, within the university um, and we had a range of challenges. First of all, we're migrating a combination of tools and content, content being PDFs and videos and so on, but tools being things like quizzes and wikis and discussion <coughs> forums and so forth. Different groups that, uh, within and beyond the faculties wanted to do it in different ways. In some cases they wanted to bring the units off cross as intact as possible so the lectures had very low amount of work in the transition process. Uh, in other cases, they wanted to just bring the content and put it in the LCMS, and then they, they would have an initiative to refresh the online learning design as part of the project. In some cases, we put the content into the LCMS. In other cases, we put it into, into, uh, into Moodle, because that, uh, in that case, they didn't want to take on the parallel change management of introducing the complexity of the LCMS into their, uh, their community. So we, we, we solved this in a range of different ways. And I guess one of the thrusts of the rest of the presentation today is looking at how we solve this educational technology challenge, but focus on those front end users and let them get on with the business of learning and teaching and put the technology in the background. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about LCMS in detail because I think uh, we covered that in our presentation uh, uh, on our Moodle Alfresco integration on uh, the, the day before yesterday. And I'm not going to cover our processes generally, although I think we have very sophisticated processes for doing this kind of implementations. Uh, we're coming up to our 80th institutional Moodle uh, implementation now. Uh, I'm actually going to focus, as I said, on, on the systems that are, that are in place. So I'm going to look at a, a kind of an architectural model. Um, you'll see I've got Moodle in the centre because it really is the, the hub uh, of an educational technology uh, anatomy, as it were. Uh, it's, it, and I say that for two reasons. Uh, one is it's a, it's a fantastic LMS. Uh, but, but secondly, it's the principal environment in which the, the learners and the lecturers uh, uh, interact within the digital context of their learning and teaching. And in ACU's case, we have uh, blended units for all teaching and learning. So it's a, it's a critical system in, in the broad process of the university. Uh, but we've also got a lot of other applications in the space. Enterprise level applications such as, obviously, the student management system for records, enrollment management and so on. We've got things like exam request management systems. We have portfolios, voice tools. We have things like tutorial groups management systems virtual classrooms, uh, and we face the challenge of bringing these disparate educational technologies and bringing them so that these, there is a seamless user experience for lecturers, for, for students, within that frontline system of the LMS. So what I'm trying to do today is to give you a window on our, uh, on our uh, implementation together for ACU, a very sophisticated environment, and, and see how we would address that. I'll start off with the, with the SMS, and uh, I'll just play a few videos in the background. Uh, in this case, the SMS where the lecturers need to create units and connect them to cohorts within the student management system. Uh, we built a, a wizard-based system that let them draw on data live from the SMS, uh, be able to select things like their, their faculty, create a unit from a template or create a unit by cloning an existing Moodle unit on selection so they could choose what they wanted to use as the baseline starting point for creating then we go through and automatically generate that unit within Moodle, insert the editing lecturer, connect the student cohorts and begin a process of automatic uh, enrolment and unenrolment uh, uh, through time. This is a, a quite a complex business process, but one that, which is very well established with ACU. But also we did a lot of usability <laughs> studies on this process. By the way, we, um, my team also provide uh, Tier 1 support through our service desk to the entire student and staff community. So that's 30,000 plus students and many thousands of staff. And we measure how that, um, that support's going. So we have empirical data on whether, whether we have issues. We found that once we got this deployed and right, we had almost no support around it. So I think we, we did solve that process of bringing the integration in, in, into the LMS. I want to show you another thing though. Here we've got uh, a variant on um, <coughs> I'm going to show you a variant on the people and participants block that I know you'll be familiar with. We also wanted to take the key information from the SMS that pertain to cohorts for a lecturer and put it at their fingertips uh, inside Moodle, inside a unit. 
So, uh, <coughs> um, hopefully that's going to play. Um, so what we did is we replaced the people and participant block with a custom variant that shows things like the cohort information, the enrollment date, student IDs, and so on. Uh, and that way the... Uh, um, uh, sorry, I've got to move on. <clears throat> so here we're adding that block, uh, and any lecture can add it to the unit. They can draw on that. So, so what it is, it's an example again of taking an external and critical system but bringing the principal information that is required for the business of learning and teaching into seamlessly with the learning management system. So here you can see a participant's block, but you'll notice we have you know, student ID from the banner SMS, term codes relating to the cohort information, enrollment dates and so on. The lecturer can then uh, sort them by their groups and message them and so on. And then move on. Um, we also have an enterprise level group management system in place in the architecture, that's a system called Allocate. And that lets the lecturers, lecturers in charge assign different groups within their broader unit cohorts. Uh, we may often have you know, several hundred or hundreds of students within a unit of study, so there are lecturers in charge, lecturers, tutors, and so on. What we've done is we've built a web service integration that brings those groups across. Now you'll see here that we have a range of tabs in what would otherwise be the familiar group uh, interface within Moodle. These are automatically populated uh, and uh, it means that that process of using that sophisticated external group management system uh, uh, lets it bring it again to fingertips within Moodle. But we have a, a range of other groups. Uh, in this case we have uh, uh, groups that relate to the enrollment cohort, so they're automatically created as well. So if a, if a lecturer in charge simply wants to use the baseline as student management system cohorts, we also have another one that uh, you may be familiar with, with from Blackboard, which is called the sign-up group. The lecturer can create a group, give it a limit on numbers, and the students can sign themselves up to the group. Now this is useful for things like workplace, work placement, uh, uh, you know, hospital placements, uh, teaching, practical placements within schools for education students and so on. But finally, we've used groupings to programmatically aggregate all of the relevant groups for any, of, uh, any assigned teaching staff, the locally assigned role in a unit. Uh, as you'll know, groupings are a group of groups. And what we've done is, to make their lives easier, we've taken all the disparate groups that might come into the LMS and simplified it by giving them a grouping. So at a glance, you can see all the students within the broader cohort that pertain to their area of responsibility. So I'll move on. Um, so that's just a, really a, a window on a small, a small window on a critical part of the integration. But in the limited time, I, I want to show you a few other things. Um, I also want to show you a uh, process of exam management. Uh, uh, ACU operate the Scion exam request system, which is a very sophisticated uh, system for managing the logistics of physical exams within the university. Where it's being held, what time, what invigilators, how many books are printed and so on. Here you can see the lecturer inside Moodle is putting in a request that is integrated with the exam system and goes through to the management exam management team. We also have uh, the approvals workflow so that the exam management team can interact with the lecturer and, and schedule that exam. Uh, we have a process where we can audit that approval process. Here you can see an audit screen of the emails passing back and forward between the exam unit and the lecturer as they're scheduling their, their, their uh, event. And the, and the uh, exams management team have got an audit uh, interface within Moodle, which lets them uh, uh, really coordinate that process of collecting the data through that frontline interface of Moodle. Um, I'm going to stop here briefly and just uh, point out this screen. With each of our integrations, we also have a, an audit model for an administrator, whether it's passing enrollment data across from uh, the SMS, whether it's passing data between a, a tutorial system or with an exam management system. So that an administrator is able to really run and audit those records and reprocess them and track querying the remote databases. So if there's any issues, uh, any troubleshooting that needs to occur, they have a, a, a nice report generating interface in which they can use to manage it. And that, we found that over the seven or eight years of integrations, we found that to be principally useful from a quality perspective after the implementation but through time. Uh, I'll just move on. Um, <coughs> Next, I, I just want to take you through, um, I, I think, probably something sort of more around, uh, well, again, administration. In this case, it's the unit evaluation process. Uh, ACU operates a, an external enterprise unit evaluation management system called Blue. 
Here you've seen a custom block within Moodle is taking a lecturer or a student directly with single sign-on into their set of evaluations. Uh, in this case, you can see the lecturer was looking at the number of completions so they can chase up their cohort and, and egg them on to complete their, uh, their, uh, their evaluations. <laughs> Students can see the evaluations they've completed and uh, which ones they haven't and so on. Again, it's just a simple example of us bringing a business process system into the uh, central architecture and making it available in the front user interface, making the lives of the students uh, and the staff simpler. Uh, but really to move on to say some more learning and teaching things, uh, and I won't dwell on this one, but it's, it's a simple Echo 360 uh, integration. Echo 360 is, of course, a lecture recording system. Lectures recorded in all, um, uh, all of the lecture theatres and automatically presented through the Echo system. Every unit, uh, optionally for the lecturer, can present a log, uh, single sign-on. Students can see their, their recorded lectures straight away as soon as they're published, pretty much straight after the lecture. That's a relatively simple uh, integration, uh, so I won't dwell on it. I, this one I do want to take you through, though. This is a Mahara integration. And Mahara is, of course, an ePortfolio. Um, ePortfolios have had too much hype. It's sort of that gets curve hype over the last few years, and, and we prefer to look at uh, things from a learning teaching perspective. Here, there's obviously a single sign-on integration, you know, the Mahoodle integration, but, but what I want to show you is a bit different. Uh, a lecture can add in, uh, 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 sorry, a, a portfolio, a, a Mahara portfolio assessment. Now, I'm just going to stop the video here. Um, and that means that they can really use uh, a, a measured approach to collecting workplace or uh, evidence based assessment. A student can then create a portfolio of work, videos, and blogs, and, and material, and then submit it back into Moodle, into the gradebook, and into the business process. The lecturer can elect to receive an email. They can mark it with feedback. The grades can go, whether they're a custom scale or a numeric or a graded scale, can go into the gradebook. We pass that feedback back into Mahara. If there are rubrics attached to the assessments, we pass those rubrics back into Mahara so they're mapped against the student profile site-wide across their, uh, their, their profile uh, in, in Mahara. Uh, and really, this is an example not only of bringing the business process into Moodle, but also of recognising that a tool such as Mahara is a tool, one of a suite of activities and resources that a lecturer can draw on. And I think using it for evidence-based assessment is a great example of putting the horse back in front of the cart and letting the portfolio uh, really operate behind the, the process of learning and teaching. Um, but I'll, I'll move on. So um, how, do we, how, do we, uh, how do we manage all of this? Uh, how do we manage a complex architecture like this once it's deployed? Now, Paul's team and the, and, and, uh, the DBC and Cummings' team have been extraordinary in drawing together a community uh, of a really quite a sophisticated uh, community of, 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 uh, of educators with a sophisticated knowledge of online learning uh, and the place of blended learning within the business process of the university. And that's been an enormous advantage to us. To that, we've tied uh, our process of ongoing support uh, in this case, you can see a couple of the, uh, things out of a support reporting process where we're looking at the kinds of incidents and issues that are being raised and we're addressing them. We meet regularly as a, as a collective team. We have a continuous process of refactoring or refinement of the architecture uh, of the systems and the business processes based on some real information. And we have huge information coming out of the service desk and coming out of the, the, the key faculty uh, infrastructure. Uh, we have a, a group of uh, flexible um, e-learning coordinators supported by uh, another layer of e-learning uh, 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 champions and they make a, a great community across the university that the lecturer, lecturers and board staff can draw on. Um, but we go a step further than that and we, we also uh, we, we host all of the, we host the core systems for ACU on our infrastructure. Uh, we have a very, uh, a very powerful uh, high availability um, uh, high load bearing uh, Moodle uh, and other educational technology application hosting environment. Uh, we have four production facilities, for example. Um, but what, what, um, I'll, just, I'll just stop there. But um, <coughs> what we also do is we try and measure the, the, the activity within the learning management system and feed that process in. Here you'll see, and I'm just going to go back. Here you'll see this is some, some analytics, some analytics integration. This is just this is just April. Uh, there's 
3.6 million page views in the LMS, half a million visits, 125,000 unique visitors. So we, we had a lot of traffic here. This is very high traffic uh, use of Moodle. So it's a big site. We use a clustered environment uh, and so on. But it tells us a lot about how the students are learning. You'll notice that they've got an average of 7.1 uh, uh, page visits. They're roughly spending six minutes, six to seven minutes. Actually, that changed later in the semester. They're down to four minutes on average. So although we, and we might see concurrency levels of five, six, seven hundred users active at the same moment in the LMS, we're seeing 30,000 users entering the LMS during the day. So you can kind of see those patterns. It tells us a lot about how our, our students are operating. But there's, there's obviously more. We also look at things like the technical tools that they're using. We look at things like uh, simple things like what browsers they're using. And that informs the way we craft and deliver the interfaces. Uh, we look at things like their geographical location. That, that's always entertaining with analytics. I'm sure you've seen analytics before. You can drill in and hunt through that. Uh, but we even go through to things like mobile devices and look at what, you know, the increasing use of, of uh, iPhones and iPads. And you'll see in some of the data a little later on, it's quite interesting what, uh, what the spread is there. And that's influencing our mobile apps uh, uh, strategies uh, around making their lives easier. So, uh, so there you can see you know, iPhones and iPads are, are up there, but we've got uh, you know, a few other um, things as well. What a, what a, before we go over the questions, I just want to really summarise that, the outcome of what that, that's a rollicking tour through, through those different technologies. Um, again, we've got Moodle as a core system because it's a principal place of interaction for, for students and staff, and, and it's a wonderful element. But really, in a sophisticated educational technology architecture, we have a raft of applications, all solving different business processes and different problems within that problem space of education that we have to deal with. Um, we have different stakeholder groups around them. Uh, to, to get a best practice <coughs> implementation, we feel, and I think we share this very much um, within ACU and Andagogic together, we feel that we need to integrate those applications. So, Ideally, the business process is seamlessly at the fingertips of the students or of the staff and lecturers who are facilitating the learning. And so that they, they really don't need to think about the technology. Those of you who attended our, our Fresco integration with Moodle would have seen that to make something simple and usable is very hard, but, but it's worth the effort uh, in the long term because it lets us get back to that process of learning and teaching. All right. Thank you.